let's build our very own vbots robot hey everyone my name is kajal and welcome to another vbots tutorial in today's vbots tutorial we will make our own differential drive robot using nodes i'm using vbots 2025a version things might be slightly different if you're using a different version i'll include all the timings in the description below so without further ado let's get into it all right in vbots you can have your own project and then you can have multiple vbots world within them so if you have an existing project and you just want to create a new world into it that's fine i'm going to create a new project just to keep everything clean and if someone's starting for the first time they, they can easily follow along go to the top menu bar file new new project directory click continue you can choose where you want your directory or folder i've selected a location and i'm going to create a new folder click create open and continue now you can name the vbots world as well i'm going to call mine my first robot and make sure to select add a rectangular arena and then click continue vbots will automatically create a few subdirectories and files that will be helpful for running your vbots simulation click done this should create a new vbots world for you with the rectangular arena now this is top view i'm going to use my mouse to zoom in and change the perspective a little bit so that it's easier to see i like this view so i'm going to go ahead and save it in vbots everything is nodes so in our previous vbots tutorial we learned how to create a solid object a sphere a ball today we're gonna use similar principles to create the robot so similarly you're gonna go to your scene tree and then click on this plus icon to add a new object or node in this case i'm gonna start with base nodes and this time we're actually going to use the robot base node if you look at the description here it is actually a solid node so it's similar to how we were creating ball in the previous vbots tutorial so once again under base node select robot click on it and then click add now in your view you're simply seeing some axes that's because your node has no shape which is what we would generally add next i say generally because before doing that we're going to add pose which is something similar to transform tree or tf that you will usually see in robotics all right so go to your scene tree click on the robot expand it and then click on children use the plus icon go to base node and select pose now if you're on a previous version of vbots you might not see pose you might see transform and i think that's what they used in the previous version but if you're using 2025a go with pose and then click add under pose go to children and this is where we're going to add our shape so once again click on the plus icon base node and select shape so this is how we're going to give our robot a body click add under shape we go to geometry again plus base node and in this scenario we're going to go with a cylinder click add and you can see in the view that you now have this white cylindrical body okay let's change some dimensions so back to the scene tree i'm going to change my height to 0.08 now this is in meters so this basically means 8 cm next we're going to change radius we're going to make it 0.045 so that's 4 and 1/2 cm next let's give it some appearance so again on the scene tree under pose children shape appearance select that click on the plus icon go to base nodes and we're going to go with pbr appearances click add now first let's change the base color let's make this into a blue cylindrical body so i'm going to change red to 0 green to 0 and blue to 1 now it's up to you you can change the colors and make it anything that you want 
Next is roughness. I'm going to make that one and I'm going to make metalness equal to zero. And once again, remember to save your VBOTS world. There's no auto save. And this is also helpful. Let's say you mess something up and you're struggling to come back to your previous version. Simply reload the VBOTS world using this icon and it will go back to the last saved version. So make it into a habit. Every time you're happy with few things, make sure to hit save. Now, one interesting thing, this cylinder is not entirely on the rectangular arena. Whenever you add a new object or a new node, it goes at location 0, 0 and that is at the center of the object. So in this case, your cylinder center is going to be at 0, 0, 0 in the VBOTS world. What this means, if you look under the hood, half of your cylindrical body is below the rectangular arena. So what you want to do is you want to lift it up and make sure that your cylinder is completely above the rectangular arena and it's not kind of like jammed in there. Now, as you can see, I kind of messed up my viewpoint. I'm not going to try and make it correct. I'm simply just going to either hit reset or reload the world and that makes it much easier. This is why I said whenever you're happy with things, just hit save. So we need to change one of these axes and we need to change the translation to lift this body. I'm actually going to change the translation in the pose. Now the other thing is it's kind of confusing to figure out which X, Y and Z is. Typically Z is the axis that's pointing upward but it can still get confusing so here's what you're gonna do you're gonna go to your top vbots menu bar click on view optional rendering show coordinate system and it pulls the coordinate system on this corner so z is your top axis green is y axis and red is x axis for this vbot world now the reason i say this is if you're on a previous vbots version your y axis and z axis might be swapped or it might be in some other different configuration i know it becomes a source of error for a lot of people so make sure to pull this coordinate system and then make changes in translation according to the coordinate system that's part of your VBOTS world. So let's change the translation. I'm going to change the Z axis. I'm going to make it 0 0.04 because we have 8 centimeters of robot. So now this, that being said, I'm also going to be adding some wheels to my robot. So I'm going to lift this even higher and I'm actually going to make it 0 0.045. Make sure to save your VBOTS world. Next thing is giving it a bounding box. Let's make all this smaller. And if you scroll down, bounding object, this is what we need to add. My bounding object is going to be the same as the object shape. So I'm simply going to reuse the pose. Click on pose and I'm going to go at the bottom here and define it as robot body and hit enter. This will allow me to reuse it as a bounding object. Let's select bounding object in the VBOT scene tree. Click on the plus icon. Now you can see along with base node and proto nodes, there's a new section called use and select robot body pose that you just defined and click add. Now when I say I'm reusing pose, I'm actually reusing everything. That is the shape as well as the translation that's attached to that shape for my entire robot. Next, let's add some wheels. Again, you're going to add it under children. So click on the plus icon, base node. And this time you're going to actually use hinge joint. And this will also make it easier for us to add our motor. Click add and then under hinge joint, go to device. Click plus icon and this is where you can add your motor. Also pay attention under base nodes, you will see position sensors. This is also something you can add at the same location. So in your hinge joint, in your devices, you can have multiple devices. And this position sensor is something you can use when you're trying to get some readings. For now, we're just going to add a rotational motor and click add. Now, one thing I will definitely recommend is go scroll down there. And when you see name, you want to change the name and give it something that you can reuse in your controller code. Controller code is basically how you will run your robot in the VBOTS simulation. So for now, I'm going to call them motor one. You can also go for something like motor left and right. Okay, next, uh, I'm going to go to endpoint. Again, click on the plus icon to add the node. And this is where we're going to add a wheel. And we're going to go and do a step similar to what we did to create the main robot body. For the robot body, we did start with robot as a node, which was already a solid node. So here we will start with just a solid node and click add. Expand solid, go to children, 
click on the plus icon base nodes and we're going to select pose this will make it easier for you to move things around and in the future you can potentially use it for tf as well so click on add go under pose children plus and now this is where we will give it shape select shape click add expand that go to geometry click on the plus icon and again we're going to go with cylinder which is going to make it shorter in height and that's going to be our wheel so click add expand and now let's do the height and radius i'm going to make the height as 0.0 1 so that's 1 cm and my radius is going to be 0.025 now on the view here you might have seen the cylinder at the start but now it's completely disappeared because remember everything is mostly going to be added at 0 0 so let's change that under your pose translation we're going to make x 0.045 so if you look at the view here you can see the disk has kind of slided and moved on the right it's currently white next i'm going to change my z to 0.025 So it's lifted up, and now I have to change the rotation so the wheel is on the side of the robot, facing down. So go into rotation. We're gonna make Y one and Z zero, and we're gonna change angle to one point five seven. When you go to the viewpoint, if you look at the green axis, that's your Y, and that's basically what I've rotated it along so that my wheel goes from being in a sleeping position to standing position. Next, we're going to change the appearance. So, go back to shape, appearance, click on the plus icon, base node, PBR appearance and click add. I'm kind of speeding through because we've done this a couple of times. Change the base color, let's make this red. So it's going to be 100 roughness 1 metalness 0 and hit enter the most important thing is to make sure to save your vbots world okay so we've got our geometry we've got our appearance shape children and again you can see we've got the bounding object so again we're going to click pause and we're going to reuse this so select pause on the scene tree and then under def make it wheel I'm calling it wheel but you can call it anything you want. And then go to bounding object, click on the plus icon, and then this time you're going to go under use and you're going to use wheel and click add. In your Vbots viewpoint, you will see these sort of lines around your wheel which is the bounding object. And I'm going to keep saying this in the Vbots tutorial video make sure to save your vbots world so just a quick overview we started with a hinge joint under device we added our motor and then under end point we added our wheel by making use of a solid object we have to do one more thing which is change the joint parameters so select joint parameters click on the plus icon and there's just one option hinge joint parameters click add expand this and then go into anchor and this is going to be the same values as your end point so your x is going to be 0.045 and your z is going to be 0.025 so you've got your main robot pose and you've got your hinge joint i'm just going to go ahead and define it and call it robot wheel so we've got our one wheel and now it's time to add another one You can go through the same process again or you can simply reuse this. So I'm going to the Vbot scene tree selecting it and then just with my keyboard shortcuts I'm copying and pasting it. But there is one thing that you will have to do different that is you're going to have to change your translation and your joint parameters so that the wheel is now on the other side because right now both of these wheels are at the same location. So go to your second wheel end point children pose And now you're going to make your x as minus 0.045 and if you have looked here you would see that second wheel moving or even if you didn't if you pay close attention now you can see now we have a second wheel also need to make sure to update our joint parameters so go back here 
under joint parameters anchor and make your x as minus 0.05 and hit enter and you're done make sure to save your vbots world with this we have a base model of our robot which is the body and two wheels this is a differential drive robot now if you want to have some fun we can add some eyes nose and even a smiling face it's the similar process to how we added the robot body but instead of starting with the robot as base node you're going to start with a solid node so click on the plus icon base node Scroll down, select solid and click add. When it came to wheels, we've opted for a hinge joint first and then we added the solid wheel as an end point for that hinge joint. But here, when we are adding another element to the robot body, which is just going to be solid, we're going to directly add solid. Expand it, go to children, click on the plus icon. Once again, I recommend using pose. If you don't want to use pose, you can directly add shape. Click add, under pose, children, add, base node, shape and click add. Go to geometry, plus icon. Now this time I'm going to go with a box. Click add. I'm going to make the size 0.01. You can't see it anymore because it's inside but we're going to change that. So let's go to translation. I'm going to make my X 0.015. I'm going to make my Y 0.045. And I'm going to make my Z 0.07. So it's somewhere here. Okay, let's rotate this around. And there we can see our eye. Okay, let's add some appearance. So click on appearance. Plus base note pbr appearance and click add expand it and then change the base color let's make it red to match with the wheels roughness one and metalness zero and hit enter now similar to before you can define pose and use that as a bounding object one thing i would say is right now i would personally not give a bounding object to that eye because it will make my vbot calculations more complicated and this is something you will see in real life world as well. You have two options. One, you can create like a perfect boundary of your robot or like your total robot with all the parts included and then use that to calculate collision. But that's a lot of calculations. So what you will see often people do is create like this simple geometry that kind of encapsulates all the parts of the robot and use that for collision detection calculation. In this case, we have decided have the bounding object for our cylindrical wheel body as well as wheels individually. If you want, you can simplify it, create a new shape, which is basically, let's say a cylinder, but it's slightly bigger than the existing one. So it captures both the wheels as well as the eye and then have just that as your one bounding object. It's completely up to you how you want to do this. All right, I'm going to go with this. And one thing I'm going to do is I'm also going to name my eye. So let's just call it left eye. This will make it easier to see things around. And then I'm just going to copy and paste this so that I can have a second eye. First, let's update the name and I'm going to call this my right eye. And next, I'm going to change the pose. So in this case, I think I need to update my X axis to go in the negative direction. So let's make that minus 0 0.015. And as you can see, the eye moved. Again, I was looking at the red arrow, which I know is the X axis here. And then I'm going to save my VBOTS world. I know there was a lot going on so I'm going to try and create a graph and instructions and put them in a PDF and you can find the link in the description below. As I mentioned so far we've added two eyes. If you want to have some more fun you can add nose, give it a smile and this is something that will allow you to practice the process of adding a node to your existing robot. Next to run our robot around in VBOTS you need to have a controller code. So in the next VBOTS tutorial video I will go over how to write controller code. I'll also include that link in the description as well as somewhere here. Before you go, if you found this video helpful, make sure to give it a like. And if you haven't already, don't forget to subscribe. Thank you for watching and I'll see you in the next video.